Here we're going to talk about combined constraints or equations. Our eventual goal is to find unknown voltage and currents at various places of a circuit. And we do this by combining two sets of equations. One equation is associated with element devices like resistors in which they have a relationship called Ohm's law, V equals I R. And the other one equations from connections using Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff's voltage laws. And note that these two sets of equations are independent of each other. That is, the device equations have nothing to do with the equations associated with how these devices are connected and vice versa. And we're going to illustrate this concept of combined constraints through various examples. Here we have a simple but important example of illustrating how we combine constraints. So here we have two devices, a driving source or current source, IS, and a resistor, R. Our unknown voltages is IX, VX, VO, and IO. So we need four equations. First, let's start off with the element equations. And here we note that I S is equal to I X from this drawing right here. And then doing uh, Ohm's law for our VO, we know that VO is equal to I O times R. So those are our element equations. So we need two more equations because since we got four unknowns. So We'll start off with a KCL at node A, and we see that the outgoing current is minus IX minus IO is equal to zero, and that implies IX is equal to, I mean IO is equal to minus IX which is equal to minus IS in terms of our driving source. So we can think of IS as our input and VO or IO as our output variables. So now that we have three equations we'll need one more Kirchhoff voltage law and we note this loop here and we'll start at this point we know and I labeled the polarities already so we have minus VX plus VO is equal to zero, which implies that VO is equal to VX. But we note that VO is equal to IO times R, which is equal to minus IS times R. So that's our output voltage associated with the input current source, IS. Now the minus sign in this equation does not net mean that VO is always negative, and nor does it mean that the resistance is negative. It just means that when the input driving force, IS, is positive, then the response VO is negative, and vice versa. This sign reversal is a result of the way we assigned our reference marks at the beginning of our analysis, and that the reference marks define the circuit input and outputs in such a way that IS and VO always have algebraic signs that are opposite. So this is basically what this equation here is our input and output relationships, not an element IV relationships, but our circuit description of our input and our output voltage. So let's say IS is equal to 2 milliamps and that R is equal to 2 kilo ohms. What's our voltage? Well, we know VO is equal to VX, so we just substitute. So it's minus 2 milliamps 
times 2 kilo ohms is equal to minus 4 volts and that's our answer for this problem now suppose I change IS to now minus 2 milliamps just change the polarity or direction associated with IS so in this case it would be minus minus 2 milliamps times 2 kilo ohms and this would be equal plus 4 volts and so that's our solution to that circuit problem so this example confirms that algebraic signs of the output VX and VO are always the opposite signs from that of the input driving force IS and we can see that also with the output current IO so if IS is 2 milliamps then IO is minus 2 milliamps if IS is negative 2 milliamps IO is positive 2 milliamps